I honestly don't really remember the last time Apple put out a normal iPhone that was this close to the actual Pro lineup. And I'm honestly starting to think that this might be the better value for your money when it comes down to getting an iPhone this year. And while it's never particularly been perfect, the normal iPhone lineup has never really been bad, but I think this year is a little bit better than normal, closing that gap between the Pro and regular. So for me, I'm almost thinking just about anybody could probably get by with a normal 16. And honestly, marketing and hype aside, the 16 is practically 95% of what the Pro is anyways. Now, objectively, there are still differences between the 16 and the 16 Pro, and yeah, the 16 Pro is gonna be better. Whether or not that's gonna be good enough for you, that all depends on your use case. But even as a creator myself, the 16 is still super compelling. As for the features between these two devices, honestly, there's a lot here that's practically the same. You get the new capture button, which is a bit gimmicky if I were to say anything about it, as well as the action button, you got Type C, you've got Apple Intelligence, which again, isn't really out yet. You get the new photographic sauce, which is actually pretty sweet in my opinion, alongside the new microphone processing that you find on the Pro lineup. Sure, it's not gonna be apples to apples across the board, but that's a lot of the same features you find on the Pro lineup. And again, it's not like the Pro isn't a better phone because it definitely is. It's just a matter if those differences are actually worth it. Pro is gonna have log recording if that's something you're into. It's gonna have the ultra wide camera. It's gonna have a slightly better main camera sensor, as well as some additional processing power behind the hood if that even matters in terms of today's iPhone usage. So yeah, it definitely is still better. And a huge point of contention is the fact that the iPhone 16 Pro does have that ProMotion display with 120 hertz. And I'm honestly telling you, a lot of people don't even know what that means, which is probably the main demographic for the 16 anyways. Honestly, take one minute and actually go on the Apple website and just put the 16 next to the 16 Pro and go down the list and you end up getting about 95% of the same features, which to me is kind of crazy actually. But if you actually do want to drill down into some of the main differences between the Pro and the regular lineup, and that's probably going to be the display, which is probably the first one that comes to mind to most people. And again, that's going to be a 60 hertz display on the regular iPhone versus 120 hertz on the Pro. Yeah, there's a difference, honestly. Again, I myself, I'm a gamer. I love high refresh displays. They're definitely better, there's no questioning that. Whether or not that actually matters is a different question. Should Apple put a higher refresh display? Absolutely. Again, when you are asking somebody outside of this whole tech bubble on YouTube, most people simply do not or don't care about the different refresh rates on a screen. For them, they just get a phone that's a little bit cheaper, it has 95% of the same features, and that's definitely enough. For myself, again, as much as I love gaming on a high refresh display, I don't care for that to have it particularly on my iPhone. Yeah, it's noticeable, and yeah, it definitely is better when you are on a pro display, but then after you use a 60 hertz display for a bit, you don't really notice it. That isn't to say it should be a high refresh display because it most definitely should. The fact is, I don't think it really matters as much as people make it out to see. Besides that, on the 16, one of the main things I spoke about in terms of my 16 Pro review was the fact that the microphone setup on there is actually a bit of a sleeper feature and it absolutely is incredible. From a creator standpoint, from a minimalist, from somebody who just takes a whole ton of notes, the microphone on here, while not the four microphone setup you find on the Pro, still does an incredible job between the different processing options. Cinema Studio in frame and all that, they just sound great. I honestly had a good time messing around with this, so here's a quick sound test on what I did with it. <laughs> But yeah, great mic, I really do dig it. That is an excellent feature, especially if you're gonna be starting a YouTube channel or something of the sort. Awesome, awesome, awesome microphone. Now, separate from the microphone, I honestly thought Apple would have probably gate kept having the photographic styles on the Pro lineup because I find that's actually a pretty sweet feature. I think that's Apple's response to film simulations that you find on the Fuji cameras, which honestly, I think it's actually pretty sweet and does a great job at customizing your photos. For myself, I like using the Amber Profile at what, negative 65 tone, 13 color or something around there. It makes these cozy, awesome looking images and I really dig it. Again, this isn't coming from somebody who even knows photography in the slightest. I'm a trash photographer, so my whole perspective when it comes down to the camera is from a videographer standpoint and I still don't really know what I'm talking about most times. But the camera on here is great. It's not gonna have the ultra wide that you are missing on the 16 Pro. That is an awesome upgrade, I won't lie. So if anybody who is really heavy into videography or cameras or anything of that sort, the 16 Pro is probably gonna be the better option on that front. But if you are okay with the normal 48 megapixel snapper on here, it does an incredible job. And because you have 48 megapixels to work with, even the digital crop, or they call it an optical crop, I don't really think that's the case here. But even if you do crop in for the 2X, it does still look incredible either way. If I was 
us to really think about it, the iPhone 16 Pro is gonna be an A++ when it comes down to the camera department, and the 16 is still an A+. So yeah, it's not gonna have the additional features that you find on the Pro, but the camera that you do have on here, or the, the two cameras you have on here, are still awesome. I will say on the 16 Pro, I absolutely love the log formats. For myself, as somebody who does like to practice cinematography and color grading, I'm still trash at it, mind you, but it's there if I need it on my iPhone when I did have the 16 Pro, but for the price difference between the 16 and the Pro lineup, I'm just not sure it's worth it this time around, mainly because I do already have a camera that has log options. And when it comes down to the cameras and stuff, the crazy thing is that I started this YouTube channel on the iPhone 12 mini, and I just shot in 4K at 24 FPS. The fact of the matter is, the 16 is a lot better than that camera on itself. So if it does come down to any sort of content creation, bar none, honestly, the 16 is an incredible option, even without log recording or that super improved ultra wide camera. Now, separately from the actual cameras, I wanna talk about the capture button, mainly because, Honestly, it's just a gimmick. I I, I want it. I tried to be nice to it. I tried to use it, and I still think it was a solution to a problem that didn't exist. Which is the same thing I said in my 16 Pro review. Sure, it definitely has its usage as a shutter button, but honestly, the way the iPhone is, how small it is, when you press the shutter button, I found it to be more jittery than I just just using my volume rocker or just tapping on the screen to take a photo. Some people might dig it, but even after changing some of the accessibility options for the pressure sensitivity, I still just ended up not using it because I didn't think it mattered. The on-screen controls, they're still faster, easier, quicker, and I don't think you really need to change that. And similarly to the 16 Pro, this has the action button. I really dig it. It's not like the biggest thing ever, but honestly, I just use this for the flashlight and it does a damn good job. Honestly, it's just one of those things I didn't think I'd appreciate as much as I did on the 15 Pro. And the fact is, it's just a useful button. I don't do anything crazy with it. I don't do shortcuts or any of that fun stuff. I just put on the flashlight and call it a day and I really dig that button. Totally separate from that, Apple Intelligence. It's not even available right now to the public. And I've been beta testing it since it originally came out on the first beta release. And honestly, it's okay, I guess. There's nothing absolutely groundbreaking here for me. I think the best feature I dig is gonna be the notification summaries, which is pretty useful. Uh, maybe Siri's a little less awful than she was before. Uh, so yeah, it does get your requests quite a bit better and she's a little bit more useful. But outside of that, Apple Intelligence so far has just been whatever. It's there, but it's also not there for the public, which is a little bit weird from Apple standards, but anyways. Either way, we're gonna have to wait for the full public release whenever that might be to see if it really is as useful as Apple markets it to be. So far, it's just been whatever. And I can say what hasn't been whatever is actually the performance on the 16. Honestly, it's sort of getting boring, if that's the word to use, which is not a bad thing, actually. I'd say the iPhones are starting to get boring when it comes down to the performance standpoint, because even going from my iPhone 13 mini to my 15 Pro to the 16 Pro, they all perform practically identically, even when it comes down to those crazy things like gaming and stuff. Yeah, I probably won't be able to play Assassin's Creed on my phone or something if I am using a 13 mini, but even still, that doesn't matter in my use case. At no point ever has my 13 mini, 15 Pro, 16 Pro, and even this regular 16, at no point does it sound slow whatsoever. So it sort of seems that Apple is strapping a jet engine to a Camry, if that makes sense. These will practically be set for seven, eight years or however long they're gonna support it. And the performance is awesome. But yeah, honestly, with all of that, I think comparison is the thief of joy in this scenario. When you put the iPhone 16 right next to the 16 Pro, again, you go down the list of features, they're practically mostly all the same. Give it some key features that I'm sure a lot of people will dig. I really enjoy some of those Pro features, but yeah, I don't really think it matters this time around by comparison to the 16 and 16 Pro because the 16 really is an incredible device. With that said, this still isn't gonna be my main device as much as I love the 16. If I were to keep any of the 16 devices, it would be the 16 over the 16 Pro. But yet again, I'm going back to my iPhone 13 mini because like I mentioned, it just does everything I need. Apple's marketing is absolutely incredible. And every single year, and I'm sure this happens to other people, every single year I get super pumped and hyped up about the devices. And they are incredible devices. I, I sh I'm probably the perfect demographic to upgrade my phone from the 13 mini to the 16 or 16 Pro. But I don't think I care anymore or the 13 mini really is just that good. Maybe it's diminishing returns on the performance, but until I don't have an actual camera like that, my, like, it could be because I have a Fuji camera or the camera I'm shooting on that I don't really rely heavily on my iPhone camera anymore. Maybe that's the main thing. For me, I'll be sticking with my iPhone 13 mini. If I had to pick one between the 16 and the 16 Pro, I would definitely go with the 16 this year round just based off of everything it has and the value for the money. But let me know what you guys think. Am I a crazy old man now going back to my 13 mini or is this 16 actually that good? Let me know what you guys think down below. Appreciate you watching till the end. Till next time. 
Cause when you're used to my mind 